to us, 2008 feels like yesterday. The day Europe gained permanent access to its own orbital laboratory, Columbus, was the apex of almost three decades of meticulous preparations, endless refinements and audacious designs that converged in 13 tons of hardware, launched aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis STS-122. Range safety systems armed. Sound suppression system, water activated. Go for mainage to start. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis as Columbus sets sail on a voyage of science to the space station. Ten years. Ten years as part of the International Space Station. Ten years for Europe's permanent scientific orbiting laboratory. Throughout this period, scientists from all over Europe and beyond came together, working and collaborating in an unprecedented way. All focused on conducting scientific and technological activities running in our orbital pressurized space. But how can science in space affect our lives on the ground? When in orbit, the human body goes through a number of adaptive changes that often resemble the symptoms of aging. Weightlessness also deeply impacts the physical behaviors of matter, giving us unexpected and exciting insights into nature. In fact, these are the very reasons to do research, to apply what we learn here on Earth and in the future of space exploration. We have here in Berlin uh, quite a long tradition in space medicine. There was a research announcement from ESA. We uh, applied for a study on uh, thermal regulation in astronauts on the International Space Station during physical exercise. During exercise in space, the temperature is increasing faster. Not so surprising for us, but uh, we found that in the first two months, the basal core temperature, before they are doing any exercise, is slightly increasing every week by approximately 0.1 degree. Your mental capabilities, they begin to drop. That is something which has to be uh, definitely figured out for long-term missions. We have to know what's the reason behind. The measurement uh, is conducted by applying a sensor at the head. Other companies have now identified this kind of measurement as a method to monitor non-invasively the core temperatures, uh, especially in surgery, in uh, intensive care units. And we're using this device as well for developing a, a special kind of helmet for firefighters to measure the core temperatures of the firefighters during their daily work. Obviously, understanding the effects of the space environment on us and other forms of life will help us progress towards more daring and demanding space missions, where we will be exposed to higher levels of radiation and will have to build a sustainable living environment for the future space pioneers. I'm working in a nuclear research center where we are investigating the impact of radiation on biology, on microbiology. And of course, whenever we want to do any biology experiment in space, you have to take into account also the impact of space radiation. We are member of a, a consortium, a European consortium, which is called MELISA, and we want to use microbes for the production of food the production of oxygen, but also for the purification of water. We now test in the International Space Station, in the Biolab facility, how oxygen production is going on in space compared to what it is expected to do and what we know how it works on ground. If you use bacteria to purify the water, you grow biomass. So we tested whether certain bacteria biomass is edible 
and we found indeed it is and it actually could have even some health promoting properties. Most people know it under the name spirulina, which is also on the food market everywhere on earth. So by testing bacteria in a different environment, in a different mode, you can find new applications and certainly also for earth benefit and for earth applications. A weightless world. A world where hidden properties of nature become visible and tangible. Gravity no longer holds an opaque blanket before our eyes. We are finally able to witness the chemical and physical principles that determine the behavior and properties of fluid and solid matter. And this understanding helps us to develop new materials and processes. We all know from school that there is three fundamental forms of matter but there's many more complex structures beyond that. These structures are very much not understood and we are trying to find out how structures grow, how nanostructures grow. Only on the space station you have the growth in its purest form and you come close to the real physics of this um, growing process. Probably only once in my lifetime I have the chance, you know, to look at this pure environment. It was full of scientific results. So have been seen in great detail how structures form, how the structures depend on the time, how the structures depend on the interaction between the particles. So we have all seen that. And of course, with this knowledge, once you see how the dependencies are, you can turn it around and try to design routes to create structures, to build new materials. Once you understand, and we have achieved quite a bit of understanding, yeah, you turn it around and you design ways to get new structures. But what these 10 years have meant for us goes far beyond the tangible scientific value of our experiments and our discoveries. These 10 years have inspired us. Inspiration that touches not only the technical and academic world, but all European citizens, contributing to make us feel as one, together with the rest of the world, all sharing the spirit of exploration and the vision of a sustainable future in space and on Earth.